Thank you. Courtesy laugh. Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, the improv <laughs> see what happened, I screwed up, I'll start again. They come up and then we want, okay, I got it. I'm gonna go now. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage falls. <laughs> the stage falls for the evening. Now, the game they're playing is one we've not actually played here well. It's a variation on the game we played here once, but it didn't work and we're gonna try it again because we think it's funny. Yeah. You guys ready? Ish. In the vicinity thereof. Maybe. Improv. What are we doing again? I was about to explain. That would be good. I'll do the explaining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny? Yeah. I want to explain the game now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would you mind? Why I wanna? <laughs> no, I was gonna introduce the act. Sorry, I was. I wasn't trying to. Calming breaths. All right. So the act is a game called Stage Fables. Normally they would react. We'll put that in in post. Stage Fables. Our, our team here is going to tell a story together, but they're not going to know uh, exactly when they're going to be telling their part of the story because we're going to be passing a mic around at random. Who's handling that task? Guess that's you, Tweedle. All right. I call him Tweedle. We, we get to find out each week which Tweedle brother he is. Tweedle dear. All right. So he's going to run back and forth handing a microphone. When a microphone appears in front of one of our improv... Yeah. What is going on? It appears in front of one of our improvisers. They, they will begin storytelling, sort of spontaneously. If they don't succeed in spontaneous storytelling, you, may, you, you guys take two steps forward. And you may throw shoes at them. However, nothing high heel, nothing that would damage them or the stage. And you guys know using an improviser as a human shield. Understood? OK. Last time they did, it was ugly. OK, so storytelling, we need a fruit. Can I please have a fruit? Tomato. Tomato. Your, your prompt for the evening for storytelling is tomato. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage falls. Once upon a time, there was the littlest tomato that ever lived. He lived amongst very giant tomatoes. The giant tomatoes tend to pick on him because he was so small. They would call him Cherry Tomato Aww. and like, like a grape, never acknowledging that the littlest tomato was even a tomato. This made him a very sad tomato. He was all alone in the world, you see, for his parents had been turned to ketchup. And so, one day, as he sat there, wallowing in his self-pity as a tiny, tiny tomato. <laughs> he realized what his goal in life truly was. He decided he wanted to be ketchup like his parents. <laughs> so, he went on a quest. This quest, he had to find out who had taken his parents in the first place. There was no answer. No one would tell him but he knew someone had taken them to be ketchup. So he started writing a, a letter to the Heinz Ketchup Company, <laughs> and this is what it said in the letter. Dear Mr. President, thank you so much for taking the time to read my letter. I know you probably get tens of these a year. <laughs> so, you know, about my parents, it's fine. I understand. Um, in fact, I was hoping you could help me. Is there somewhere uh, that I could go to aspire, to train, to become like them, like ketchup? Or at the very least, tell me which of the 57 flavors you made them into, because that would help me to get closure. <laughs> Because you turned my parents into ketchup. 
because we're all tomatoes and that's what you do with them, you jerk. <laughs> or you could just, you know, take me now and make me into ketchup. I, I, I have some photos of me in bottles that I've taken. <laughs> If you want to see them for reference. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> don't worry, all of these are work safe. <laughs> Freeze. Can I get a volunteer from the audience? Don't all jump up at once. All right, Scott, come on up there. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Rankis will now take the microphone. Because I realize we haven't, we haven't let poor Tweedle have a chance in being part of the story. Now, if you'd also accelerate and you know, maybe, maybe mix it up a little, get them to tell the story a little more intensely. Uh, I, need, I need a place where, where the story continues. Antarctica. And Russia. Russia. In Mother Russia, ketchup makes you. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage falls, act two. Sincerely yours, little list tomato. <laughs> In Soviet ketchup factory. I, it is possible to not become ketchup, but become a spokesperson for us. You see, your pictures of you in the bottle are quite nice, but they need some size variants. You have large tomatoes, maybe a little tomato might work. Otherwise, you just have borscht, and really, who wants that? <laughs> Is, you know, more like uh, we can Photoshop you, make you look uh, shinier and brighter. It's very cold, we also need the vodka to be able to stay warm. And so Little Tomato takes letter from President Comrade Ketchup. <laughs> sends it into the factory, the factory president reads it and says, Remember, borscht is best served cold. <laughs> and always remember to bring the vodka with you. Because vodka is good. And so Littlest Tomato took that advice, decided to go to Antarctica, after all. Where he met friend Polar Bear and changed his name to Bloody Mary. <laughs> Bloody Marys are good too. Bloody Marys are made from Brother Russia vodka. Because the Polar Bear realized with Bloody Mary, he was warmer because of vodka. And so Polar Bear Friend takes Tiny Tomato and says to him, Tiny Tomato, I wish that you would jump in my glass and be a part of this delicious beverage that you have so aptly named yourself after. <laughs> so he jumped into the glass and went for a swim. But was still lonely because no celery. <laughs> but that was okay because Polar Bear decided Little Tomato would taste good. With ketchup. And so, they found a new friend for Littlest Tomato, Cilantro. <laughs> cilantro was the name of a penguin. <laughs> so, the polar bear put ketchup on him. And... Shoot! Uh, <laughs> And as Cilantro, the penguin, came up to the polar bear, he said, Help me? Because I lost my parents, and the littlest tomato understood what the penguin meant. What the penguin meant was, What's a Bloody Mary without blood? <laughs> so, the penguin was sacrificed for the Bloody Mary. And the polar bear ate the remnants. Please, the end. <laughs> but it wasn't the end, because there was the littlest tomato. And penguin tastes good with ketchup. But polar bear don't have ketchup. So he turned little tomato into ketchup. <laughs> the end. And what's the moral of this train wreck? Ladies and gentlemen, the stage falls! <laughs>